What is an axe grinder? We've heard that phrase before, I'm sure. Maybe some taking up a cause, or taking a stand, it's said, or starting a Me Too movement, or a quote going against the grain. They might be, in many cases, referred to as an axe grinder to include those who pursue, quote, social justice. Take up the microphone, take up signs, take up writing, take up protesting. Noting, by the way, protesting, in my mind, often associated with anger, vigor, shall we say, called axe grinding. I would even state with some courage now that Gandhi and Nelson Mandela and some other key leaders throughout the world at times were axe grinders in their earlier parts of life. Does that mean, though, that this is necessarily a bad thing? And what do I mean by axe grinding anyway? Well, it strikes me the notion or idea behind axe grinding has almost everything to do with conveying a certain truth, but without fully understanding and stating that one knows why the person one is talking about or a certain um, aspect of them, a trait, what have you, value system, whatever, has come into being. And so this being considered a mistruth with a truth stated at the same time in one package, often due to either a lack of understanding of how the other person walks in their shoes or a lack of proper terminology to state anything about people in a non-blameful manner. Hence, Dr. David D. Burns, who wrote as a psychiatrist in around 1980, uh, Feeling Good, the New Mood Therapy, urging people as a cognitive therapist then not to label people, my interpretation now being not to use words that you would say are disrespectful. That being an important concept to get clarity on. You might take another example. What about those who have a child or a spouse or other loved one who dies in an automobile accident and uh, this due to some other party hitting one's car with loved ones in it and uh, the other person inebriated, some would say drunk, and hence the concept behind angry people arguably in mothers against drunk driving. Are they thus axe grinders and is that thus a bad idea to be an axe grinding mother against drunk drivers? Well, there is, it comes to mind today, the phrase, if you can't beat them, join them. And you can't beat City Hall. And so maybe some people suffering injuries or not wanting to be the odd man out also figure, what can I do about all this? I don't want to be the odd man out here and stand out like a sore thumb and be gossiped about and kicked out of the village, so to speak, of life. And so I'm going to join them. And then that being problematic, perhaps, in the long term especially. Um, some would say, as Dr., um, let's see, Martha Beck did, her eventually having written on this as a Ph.D. holder in sociology from Harvard, a book called Integrity. She talked of how so many of us compromise who we are to fit into society. But I also have in my mind this phrase from psychology too, identification with the aggressor, that might have originally come from Freud as a defense mechanism concept, but someone first came up with that phrase. I think it ties in to sometimes someone feeling under threat and having to supposedly take a side, not wanting to sit on the fence, at least so that they feel safe in having allies or knowing that they're not going to have any allies and how that might be better anyway. 
And so identification with the aggressor, meaning to side with the more powerful, either one person or in terms of a group having more sway because of more numbers, more money, what have you. And you might say once again, this then tying into if you can't beat them, join them. And someone feeling they have to do one or the other. Lest they feel very, very unsafe, out on a limb, all alone, so to speak, with it very easy to have it sawn off. So maybe the axe grinder is somebody who is a combination both of someone unable to speak things with respect, sometimes you might say even with humor, and thirdly, without catastrophizing matters in general. And so coming off panicky also, and defending this panic with aggression. All of this called axe grinding. But if there weren't at least some axe grinders in the world, would any truth be spoken up about? Would everybody have, quote, been silenced, at least in their own minds, and never speak up, having joined the group rather than um, feeling they could either beat the group or tolerate being out on a limb alone? Some, too, having taken a stand, and perhaps without uh, the advantageous use of proper vocabulary, amongst other things, to do so with um, calmness, humor, a smile, and respect, having been told they're a masochist as to the consequences that might follow, and probably will follow, especially with no allies, or very few in number, and sticking to a certain environment, too, when one has taken a stand or said something in general. Um, One last thought, then. I know that so-called axe grinders typically are associated with starting off this way because they care, but um, maybe they don't know how to say it properly once again, or they're very panicky, uh, very catastrophizing as to the whole set of issues, or feel they have no allies and thus feel scared also. But um, again, Does that mean everybody who starts off this way, uh, if, quote, axe grinding, stays so? I believe two key examples, Gandhi and Nelson Mandela, did not stay that way. For when Nelson Mandela got out of prison, amongst other things, he hired some of the people who were his prison guards into his administration and... In a video after prison time, he said he believed humility to be very, very important. So maybe also a part of the axe-grinding mentality, often associated surely much more with younger age than middle or older age, is a certain lack of humility when one states a certain position one has. I know that was certainly my life to state certain things as to one's taking a stand, but doing so in a matter that was prideful and boastful about one's even taking that stand as for having a moral superiority uh, and this being conveyed to others as having it by choice and uh, a put-down mechanism also. I think this is all part and parcel then of the concept we call axe grinding, And I believe it advantageous to have viewpoints somewhat called driven by axe grinding rather than for nothing nothing ever to be spoken about. For surely we all start out saying certain things and then growing in terms of how we convey it more respectfully, with more courage, less fear, um, less catastrophizing, Uh, more humor, and more of a smile, each to the ability to the extent they can grow more and more into this. Some starting off in what you might call the axe grinding mode and not being able to grow much and having the same set of negative 
aspects to their 70s or 80s. And yet with no one seeing anything at all, everyone having turned a, quote, blind eye or joined, shall we say, the aggressive side, then doesn't everything then run totally amok in time? One last thought. A Mr. Fletcher once wrote a book, Situation Ethics, as a Christian, and he defined love to be doing whatever you feel like it uh, to be as to your best interest in others. But can that be twisted then, such that this can be especially interpreted what's best for me or others in the short term, not the long term, for both people and the planet? and all other animal life forms on it, too, I might add, the environment included in all of this. So that's another avenue to explore, then, if we're simply going to define what's best by what feels best, who's to say that we're defining these good feelings as to uh, how best to love somebody, shall we say, if it's on a short-term impact in our lives and others only. Isn't that then why we look down upon the so-called drug addict or runner from feelings that they are taking the short view of expediency on how to calm themselves with regard to their fears, both within and without. We're urged to take the long-term view. These are some thoughts perhaps I've considered pondered and offer up